You are listening to the Workbench After Hours podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to the Second Amendment, where we talk about firearms, everything going on in the gun community, and we even try a different whiskey every week. On this week's episode, we talk about the Ammo Act, and if do you need a license to have a gun? And I talk to local law enforcement and get their opinions on a 2A. And while we're doing all this, we're drinking Walcott whiskey. Welcome to episode 94 of the Workbench After Hours podcast. Chris, what are we drinking this week? We are drinking Walcott Kentucky bourbon. It says it's distilled by Barton 1792, which I don't know anything about them. So what I've actually found out on this is we got this at Total One and Spirits. Yep. This is specifically made for them. So uh-huh. you can't actually find this anywhere else other than a Total One and Spirits if you have one of those in your area. Yeah. So that's what I found out. But it is distilled by Barton 1792 Distillery. If you have a Total One and Spirits in your area, they'll have it. Yeah. Usually. And there's different versions of it. We got the cheapest yeah. one. But Total One and Spirits is new to the Kansas City area. Yes, it is. It was overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. But with this one, I mean, I'm getting all vanilla, caramel, toasted oak. Yep. Yep. Straight, straight up bourbon. Yep. And that's pretty much the flavors that they have on the website is rich vanilla, spice, and caramel. Hmm. They don't elaborate too much on it. So that's pretty much what we're getting. Yeah. And this was a, what, 45%? Yeah, 45%. So. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a pretty easy sipper, but yeah, yeah I couldn't tell much from that little, little like drip that he mm-hmm. gave us. Yeah, it's definitely got some spice to it. Yeah, on the back end. Yeah, mm, I can feel it in the chest already. <laughs> I can already feel it. Yeah, so with this, I mean, it's not complex or anything, so it's pretty. Your I typical mean, bourbon whiskey. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a rye formula in here. Yeah, that's where all that spice is coming from. So really, you're getting notes of vanilla, caramel, and just spice. Yep. You get some of that oaky, toasted oak, mm-hmm. from the barrel. But I mean, you can't really. There's no like proof. Yeah. Taste to it or anything like that. It's pretty. It's a pretty smooth drink. Yeah. Getting a little bit of that burn <laughs> yeah. in the chest, like you were saying, but you know, not bad neat. They did say on the website that this is a good one to go with like an old fashioned mix in there, which I could see that, especially with that spice. Yeah. It's not bad. It's yeah. Very light. It was like, what, 20 something? I yeah. Think. It was one of the cheaper ones there. Yeah. Yeah. Had a lot of cheap whiskeys and bourbons were like, whoa, what is all this? Yeah. I want, I want to get one of the ones that was five ninety five <laughs> or six bucks for the liter. Well, that should be really good though. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we should have. <laughs> We should have done this a long time ago. It would have saved us a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah. So see how it does. I'm assuming it's going to make it a little bit sweeter, bring out the vanilla and caramel, and probably dumb down the (laughs) spice spice as usual. Yeah. (laughs) So so we got a lot, not a lot to talk about, but Chris has some information that he got talking to a local police department over, because there's always the question of what would the local police do if the government decides to do all the stupid gun control that they're trying to do? So he talked to them. So we'll go over kind of what their answers were in the small town that he lives in. But if you haven't noticed, there's been some recent new bills being introduced because anytime there's a mass shooting, Biden goes out and says, I'm going to ban assault weapons, high capacity magazines. And this last time he said he was going to try to do it through that gun uh, prevention, violence protection, whatever act that he passed which is how the ATF has been doing all these stupid rules through. So, but we have, as of right now, two bills that just got introduced and there, there's not a whole lot of text to them yet because they just got introduced that we'll go over, but it's what you would typically (laughs) expect, but a little bit different and kind of scary at the same time. Go figure. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So the first one uh, that I heard about is actually has to do with ammo so it is the the bill number is hr 6172 it's been introduced to the house or it's on the process of getting introduced the text on the website with the text of the whole bill isn't up there yet but uh yeah basically what this is called it's called the ammo act 
<laughs> I guess you could probably guess what they're trying to come after with this one, right? Yep. So it's called the Ammunition Modernization Monitoring Oversight Act. And they shortened it to Ammo Act. <laughs> <laughs> so it was introduced by who else? Elizabeth Warren and uh, another Connecticut Democrat and somebody from California. Imagine that hmm. uh, introduced that. So it's a 13 page uh, act that or we'll see. Uh, hopefully when it comes out, we'll be able to read more of it. But the gist of it is that they actually want to control what we can buy. bulk ammo. And. In, in order to enforce it, there's a threat of a fine of up to $250,000 if you break the law under this act. So it wants to use the NIC system to do a background check on anybody that buys ammo. That's done. <laughs> right? Yeah. So not only do you have to do a background check for the gun you're buying, but then potentially the ammo. What they need to do is a oh, hey. background check then on knives. Oh hey, you hey Chris, do you want to uh do you want to go to the range? Well hang on, we go to gotta go to Academy and get some ammo because we're out. But wait, we're gonna have to do a background check. Uh no thanks. And then if you get delayed, uh so much for going and shooting. Yeah. Even mm-hmm. though you bought that gun legally, did the background check. Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh and they they're gonna actually increase some funds for the NCIS system because that will obviously uh Slow it down. <laughs> Slow it down by a lot. So they're going to put some money towards that. But uh, it would also eliminate home delivery in most cases, forcing those who buy ammo online to have it delivered to a local FFL for transfer, kind of like you do now with guns. So that would suck. <laughs> uh, and then the, you'd have to have a fee with that. Yeah. So not only are you paying for shipping, whatever you're paying for that ammo, tack on a transfer fee. And yeah. that's. Like, we charge $20. I don't know what it would be for ammo. Probably about the same God. amount. And there's other businesses out there that charge $40. i have seen it up as much as $60 for a, a gun transfer. But the, if I was one of these bigger companies like this, and I think it was stupid, you know what I'd charge? One cent. Right. Just a penny. That's it. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, um, the people completing a background check would have to show valid ID name, address, signature form uh, devised by the U.S. Department of Justice. So I'm wondering if it will be, it'll obviously have to be different than the form 4473, but you're going to have to provide your that's so dumb. information. But th- So that's, that's a big part of it, obviously, but the even bigger part of it is that it would restrict what it deems to be bulk ammo sales. There's really, we don't know without seeing the text, but we think it's going to be Anything more than a hundred rounds of fifty caliber ammunition, or a thousand rounds of any caliber outside of that, in any period of five consecutive days. So if you buy a thousand round bulk pack of nine millimeter, can't do that. Mm, that's kind of dumb. So now they're going to be nine hundred ninety nine rounds. Yeah, <laughs> just going to have to take one out. Yep. But five consecutive days. So it's not like you can, if you go to a academy, buy X amount of rounds that day, go and shoot it, and then you go back, well, where they have a sale. You're well, going to have to. thing. It says caliber. So does that mean I do 1,000 rounds for, or 999 of nine millimeter? Then the next day I go buy 223. Then the next day, 556 five, or 65 Creedmoor. And right. just, then it's not consecutive, it's, and it's different calibers. That's when we, this is when we have to wait for that text to yeah. see what exactly it's going to do. And we'll, once that comes up, we'll uh, go over that on the future <laughs> podcast just so you can be aware. I would assume and hope that this isn't going to pass just like a lot of the other ridiculous stuff that they try to do. Yeah. I mean, but they, you never know. They do have something similar like this in Illinois with the void card. Yep. So it's already in effect in one state. <laughs> and we'll get to Illinois here in a minute. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. And, Obviously, all of the major and minor anti-gun groups all support this. Yeah, go figure. Yeah, go figure that. So keep a lookout for that text. If you Google it, it's HR 6172. Once that text comes available, you can kind of read through it and see exactly how they're going to limit that. And they may say, you know, it may be less than a 1,000 rounds. You never know. And I'm sure they'll kind of get into the other calibers and stuff like that, but just wanted you guys to be aware that this is something being introduced because 
You know, they keep trying to go after AR-15s and AK-47s that are not assault weapons. Yeah. And now they're like, okay, well, let's go after the stuff that you need to use those. Yeah, I saw something kind of kind of crazy, but it's I think we kind of relate to it. It was a, a guy who was talking about, like, discrimination, right? In right. schools and how they got the pride flag. And he's like, asked them to put up this flag, and it was for straight. And he's like, if they say no, then give them this packet. And it talks about discrimination, right? And then the next day, come back and say, I want you to hang this flag up. And if they say no, then you can turn around and sue them because you gave them the information showing how this is discrimination, and you were informed that this is a form of discrimination. Here's all the everything. <laughs> and then you turn around and sue them. Nice. So why don't we do this to like some of these other groups? Right. Because it, it's discrimination almost. It is. You're taking away my right yep. to go to a range. You know, and a lot of people think a thousand rounds is a lot. If you shoot consistently, yeah. go to the range on a regular basis, that is not a lot. <laughs> no. It does not take much to go through a thousand rounds. No, it doesn't. Especially like 22. I mean, that's a plinking gun. You're going to go through a lot of that. <laughs> At a time, and yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Especially now that ammo prices have slightly kind of come back down yeah. a little bit. I don't see this passing, but again, you just never know. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't. I hope it just gets dismissed like all the other rulings they were trying to pull. But yeah, I thought they were creative with that ammo act. Yeah. <laughs> Ammunition, modernization, and monitoring oversight. They Who probably, the hell came probably, up with they that? I don't even know what ammo stands for. Right. <laughs> wow. So they're going to... Definitely monitor what you... They're going to know what you have, yeah. honestly, at yeah. that point. And that's not... You're not supposed to know. Because then... I wonder what that form would look like. Like, are you going to list out what ammo they're buying? Is like, kind of like serialized? you do with a gun. You list out what gun it is. It's almost like... I don't know. It kind of reminds me of the military. When we check out a weapon, they give you a serialized number or lot number for ammo. Really? Yeah. And then, like, they would check it in and out, and they'd check those lot numbers. I wonder if hmm. it's going to be similar or have some something to do with the lot and that number. I just, as an FFO, I don't want to have to deal with doing transfers for ammo. Well, not to mention that. Like, let's say you do go and buy a 55-gallon drum of ammo. Right. That, <laughs> what? How would you document that? Uh, I'm not going to go through here and count and write down every serial number of every freaking bullet. You might not be able to buy it at that point because they're going to restrict anything over 1,000 rounds, so that might be a... Yeah, but still, no. like, are those, they're all going to be different num lot numbers if you're buying big, big bulk like that. So, we'll how, see. How, I don't know. <laughs> but, and I'm sure this would not apply to local law enforcement. No, I'm sure not. Watch, they're going to come to where they're going to serialize each casing or bullet. <laughs> they're going to find a way to do that or somehow keep track of it. There's no, oh. They're going to put some little chip in each round of ammo to Fine. where it tracks, kind of like, you know, with Top Golf. <laughs> It'll be like GPS and yeah. know exactly where it's at, where it got shot at, yep. what time. How fast it was moving. Uh, yeah, the velocity. <laughs> God, that would Angle. suck. <laughs> you know, that's probably not, I mean, I'm yeah, sure that's that, doable. Oh, I'm sure it is. I mean, if you could put a tracker in a golf ball. Yeah, you can put it in a bullet. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going to limit the number yeah. of rounds a person can have. Yeah. Plus, that'll rise the cost of ammo and yep. and kind of deter Here. people from being able, being able to buy. Yeah. That's when you just get into reloading real right. quick. So if this does pass, it's got to pass the House and the Senate, obviously, and then Joe Biden's obviously going to yeah. sign it into law. Well, that'd be another thing, too. Like, if you do reload, how, how would they know? Because there's a lot of people out there that reload because they shoot so much. There are. So... <laughs> Are they going to be, oh, you can't reload now? I don't know. That, that'll that be interesting to see if they address that. Yeah. Because, or does that, because that's manufactured ammo. Yeah. What if you're buying bullets mm -hmm. and then, you know, brass separately and all the and all those, are they going to limit that? Yeah. Are they going to be watching the dies you buy and everything? I, reloading and I would assume in that 13 page, they would address that somehow. Probably, they probably didn't even think about it, knowing them. Well, hopefully they don't listen to this yeah. before they enter the text. <laughs> oh, yeah, we don't want to give them any ideas. Yeah, You can't make your own home, ammo at home. Nope. Don't worry, Elizabeth Warren. It's impossible to make ammo at home. Yeah, We can't do it. We don't nope. have the proper equipment. Don't worry about it. <laughs> People don't do it. 
No, not at all. <laughs> That's that, Bill. While Chris had mentioned Illinois. Yeah. You know, back when I was in my younger days and <laughs> fresh out of college, wanting to know what to do with my life, I liked going to Chicago because... You know, it's a fun city to go to and visit. It is. They stay up late and party. Yeah, that and just the whole downtown vibe is really cool. I thought really hard about possibly moving there. Just whether it be for a short amount of time or just to get a job and see if I'd like or whatever. I really thought about moving there. But I am so glad I didn't because <laughs> of this. A federal appeals court has upheld the Illinois law which bans the sale of certain firearms, magazines, and ammunition calibers. Capital News Illinois reports the court's majority opinion says even the most important personal freedoms have their limits. Democratic state lawmakers pushed for this ban in January after the deadly shooting in Highland Park on the 4th of July last year. The Illinois Supreme Court upheld the law back in August. It could now be appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. That's what Joe Biden wants for yeah. every state, right? Yeah. But a lot of, I think, I saw somewhere that California, with their assault weapons ban, it got nixed in the butt by a court. And that, nope, you can buy it. You can do what you want with it. Yeah, finally, the Supreme Court is hearing a lot of Second Amendment cases. Yeah. But, I mean, this is, at a state level, they, they are like, no, the Second Amendment doesn't encase every single firearm now. I think everyone that's against the Second Amendment should move to these gun-controlled states and live there and find out real quick why they need them. Move to California. Move to Illinois. New York, New Jersey. Yeah. If you don't like guns, go to there. They're they're, they're your state. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how safe you feel. Go up to Oakland. Yeah. And get you an air horn like we talked about. (laughs) Go to to (laughs) LA. (laughs) Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So that's that's bad news for you Illinois residents. Uh, I don't know. Move somewhere friendlier. Yeah. Nebraska. <laughs> the Dakotas. Kansas yeah. is pretty good. Missouri. Missouri. <laughs> Oklahoma. Obviously, Texas. Yeah. But that, that sucks because if you, I mean, Chicago is really awesome. It is. It's a fun little town. But it's also a town you need to protect yourself. Like, you, yeah. you want to be able to carry a gun because there's so much crime there, but you can't. Yeah. And well, law abiding citizens can't have those weapons. Though. I got a friend that lives in Illinois from the military. Yeah. We're, and together and. We were talking about that, and he's like, it's usually Chicago is the worst part about it. The, the, the more Democratic part is the big city. Mm-hmm. Everywhere outside there is more Republican, gun-friendly, and everything. And I was like, man, that kind of sucks. Because, yeah, Illinois would be fun to live in, like especially Chicago, because there is a lot to do down there. Mm-hmm. But not with all that. <laughs> well, remember when we were talking about the uh, stuff that was going to infect in Washington, yeah. in like Oregon? And Portland has a lot of people in a small area that are anti-gun, but anywhere outside of Portland yeah. was gun friendly two-way, yeah. gun-friendly Republicans, but because they didn't have the so, masses there to vote against it, yeah. Portland, because of stupid cities like Portland, that entire yeah. state is affected when it's really just the people that live in Portland you know, yeah. want that, whereas everybody else... In rural areas and and stuff like that don't agree like they yeah. want guns so yeah that's just kind of the same thing there yeah, it, it sucks, sucks. <laughs> so yeah and i mean that would happen here in johnson county kansas too because oh yeah you know there's a lot of democrats here in the kansas city area where there's a lot of population so you know we do have a democratic governor and stuff like that but if you go outside to the rural areas and some of the other Parts of the state, like basically every part west of here, is hugely Republican. Yeah. And it's just this certain pocket of the big city, yeah. which yeah. kind of sucks. So the other bill that came out recently, I just heard about this actually today before we started. Uh, this is, it was introduced before by Senator Cory Booker, a Democrat of New Jersey, there you go. Uh, so he's reintroducing the Federal Firearm Licensing Act. In his quotations, if you need a license to drive a car, you should need a license to own a gun. Funny thing is, I did hear something else. I want I need to go verify this, though. Technically, our driving license isn't for our personal driving leisure. 
It's both mostly for commercial that we're supposed to have a license for commercial, but we kind of like made it where you have to have a driving license to drive. So like like a like a tractor trailer, yeah, kind of a tractor thing? supply like that, or like a truck and trailer for transport and things like that. That's what we technically need a license for. Huh. I need to verify that though. I yeah. heard that and I was like, man. I've never heard that. I heard it a couple of times. It showed up like on, you know, like those little TikTok shorts and YouTube shorts. And I was like, I wonder if that's true. I wonder when they actually started requiring you to have a driver's license. Yeah. When that. that Well, that and like also I've heard about taxes. Like you're technically we're not supposed to pay tax. And over the time we've slowly started doing it and obeying the government. But Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> like when you used to actually have to write it out on form instead of doing electronic taxes and do your taxes at the end of the year. Right. There's a section in there. Do you want to pay taxes or not? You just say no. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Damn. So on this, uh, this is on actual, he's got a website oh, where he kind of talks about this bill and has all these statistics that say why this would lower crime and mass shootings and all this stuff. And, a lot of this stuff is not true. It's like, where do you get these? Like any other Democratic person that is trying to ban guns and everything, they come up with this unrealistic statistics that aren't true. You know what they need to do? What they do with us in like college and everything? Didn't we have to have like, if we have statistics or anything, have to cite where we got that information? Right. That's right. what they need to do. <laughs> Where'd you get your information from? Where'd you study oh, it from? This study that so and so did. What study? Where'd you get it from? What year was it done? <laughs> yeah, they basically go on to say that too many American kids are dying and we're the only nation that has to be afraid of all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. But just to kind of recap what he wants is in short, is you have to have a license to carry a gun. But in order to get that, there's several requirements that they want you to have. So they there is actually text to this. It's about 11 pages. Um, I'll post a link in the description below if you want to check this out. But luckily, it was shot down once. Probably we can down again. assume and hope it's going to get shot down again. But basically, they want to have a federal license to purchase or receive firearms. So you can't just have one because it's your constitutional right. You have to have a license. And in order to have the license, you have to re- uh, meet these requirements that you shall be eligible to receive a license if you have completed training in firearm safety, which we would recommend, but yeah. would not say, hey, this is mandatory. Yeah. You know, it's always a good idea. To, and I always recommend it, especially if you're new to guns and just to get familiar and stuff. Yeah. Good to take a gun safety. And they're pretty. Yeah, they're help. They're helpful. Yeah, they're helpful and they're inexpensive. Yeah. I like the concealed carry classes if, you know, your state allows that. But. I don't think it should be a requirement in order to own a gun. No. But it is it is recommended. Um, and then not only do you have to do that training, you have to complete training in a firearm safety, including, and then also do a written test to demonstrate the knowledge of the firearms laws. And then you have to have hands-on testing, including firing testing, to demonstrate that you can safely use that firearm. <laughs> so you have to... Not only take a, the course and do a stuff. shooting qualification. Yeah, which you kind of have to do for your concealed carry license anyway. Yeah. But, um, and then you also have to do a submit a background investigation and criminal history check, and submit proof of identity. You have to <laughs> submit fingerprints. So pretty much, your concealed carry. Pretty, pretty much. much. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what their test would entail and stuff like that i'm sure it's but i don't i don't same. even know this is just so you can own a gun this isn't so you can conceal carry yeah it's just i'm sure you'd have to get i think if you got your license. license at that point it might as well just be concealed carry since you're going through all this and you tell them to f off and then you have to submit identifying information on the firearm that the person intends to obtain including the make model serial number and identity of the firearm seller or transfer there's a national register right there yeah so you have to have a license to have this gun, but then you also have to make it known to the government that you have this gun. And this half, yeah, it's got to, yeah, it's got to be identified by both local offices and urban rules. The 
Attorney General can deny a license no later than 30 days. And yeah, there's a bunch of stuff to it. And then there's things about like if you get denied and stuff like this. But then that also creates a gun registry. Yeah, with, we don't want that. So, I, I mean, you can obviously get denied. So it's then you cr- can't own any it's guns. It's crazy how history repeats itself. 13 pages. It's a pretty easy read and it's just crap. I think if they're going to make you have a license for that, they should do it for your speech, too, then. It shall be unlawful for any individual to sell or dispose of a firearm to a person unless the individual reports the transaction to the attorney general not later than three business days after the date on which the firearm was sold or transferred. And then you got to include all the information about the the serial number. Jesus. Yeah, they're just trying to get a gun registry out of it. That's what they want. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. I'll do it once say ATF will give me their gun registry. How about that? Yeah. So every gun just... they got, I want serial number, lot numbers, everything like that. And right. I want it to be it should be local no knowledge <laughs> for everyone. So not only do you have to do the training, the written test, hands on training, background check, let them know what your gun is, but um it's not good forever. You have to renew it every five years. At which point you have to go through another background check, undergo firearm safety training again. (laughs) That's dumb. You've already gone through it. You've already got all the weapons. And it gives the Department of Justice um, a mechanism to revoke a license if an individual poses danger to themselves or under others. Well, that's real defiant. And they could just say what they want at that point. (laughs) It would also require the FBI to regularly conduct checks to ensure that inv- individuals are compliant with the uh, license requirements. And uh, why is the FBI yeah. doing it? Why isn't it the ATF? <laughs> isn't that the ATF's job? They're all the same. Oh my God. <laughs> so Corey Booker, do your homework. I want to see your next time you write something. I want it to be cited where you got your information at and all that. And guess what other states it's sponsored by? It's sponsored by Connecticut, Hawaii, which has strict gun control, yeah. uh, New Jersey, Massachusetts, another Hawaii and New Jersey. So basically the people that have the strictest gun control states that are just wanting to make it even worse. Yep. At a, at a national level. Thanks guys. Just thanks for not being American. Why don't you guys just succeed from the U S and yep. we'll just, the Midwest will be its own country yeah. and we'll have a free life. Yep. yep. So, yeah. So if you live in those States, election time comes up. You need to get out there and vote. Yeah. I I know it seems like, well, my one vote isn't going to matter. It honestly does. Yep. It it makes a difference, especially if you get no mail-in votes. Right. (laughs) Especially if you get enough people thinking that way and actually going and vote, it's going to at some point make a difference. And yeah, unfortunately, they give all these scary statistics to make it sound like why this is good. And it is common sense gun law. And to people that don't know otherwise... Yeah, makes sense. Sure. I, I believe these statistics. Sure. Yeah, from uh, 77% 2019. Of, of Americans back this this idea. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. That was also 2019 by Quinnipiac Survey. Or it's Quinnipiac. You know, I've never been surveyed on anything Neither as f- regards to guns. You think we should have them? You think we should gun control? I've never been asked that question. Nope. Who are they asking these questions to? Uh, their colleagues yeah. that are Democrats. If anybody's listening to this podcast on, if you're on YouTube and can comment, let us know if you've ever been asked a poll question uh, regarding firearms and and or gun control because we haven't. Yeah. Other than that one text I got from Gavin Newsom <laughs> where he was uh, wanting to do something and I told him to go F himself. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. I mean, I get stuff all the time about Medicare Part A and B and senior benefits. Yeah, well, because all that gray hair you got going uh, on over apparently. there. Apparently. It's funny when you tell them you're in Mexico. I'm like, oh, New Mexico, the state? And I'm like, no, Mexico, the country. Right. Well, how do you have that with this uh, phone number? It's like the same way you've got the same phone number where I'm at <laughs> when you're not here. And you're in a call center overseas. Right. Like, no, I was like, yeah, huh? it's called VPNs. Come on, people. <laughs> so you, I know, I know a big question is with all these ATF rulings and all this threat of really bad gun control, we're always like, Will the local law enforcement, what would they do? Like, obviously, the ATF at a federal level would would really try to enforce this. You already see it with a lot of 
videos of them going door to door yeah. trying to take guns illegally and really scaring people because they come dressed in full armor and they act like you're your friend and all of a sudden you're a bad guy. And if they come to your door, just shut it in their face and lock the door and call the local sheriff saying they're trying to break an entry. Yeah. And that they're armed. Yeah. There's been so many videos out there where they start off saying, oh, you're not in trouble, you know, blah, blah, blah. Do you have this, whatever they felt like um, out long at that time? And then they're like, well, if, if you have this and aren't telling this, you can go to prison and all this stuff. And they like turn real quick. You go from not being in trouble to now you're in deep trouble. Yeah. It's like, okay. at that point, just plead the fifth, close the door, lock it. They don't have a warrant to come into your home. Don't invite them in. But a lot of people don't know that. And yeah. if you see armed law enforcement come in, I mean, what are you going to do? They got to have a warrant to come into your house. Yeah. Simple as that. A lot of it is um, I've seen people just being approached outside their house. You get off my property. Yeah. They better not come do it at one of these states where we've got castle rules. Right. Because uh, I'm sorry, you're threatening me. You're in, you got an, a weapon. At that point, hmm, yeah. get off my property. I've told you three times. Yeah. If you don't do it, I'm standing my ground. So we know what the ATF would do. They would they would try and so say there is a a ban on you know pistol braces and ARs, AKs, whatever. What we're always asking what I guess did you ask him that question? I didn't ask him that. I was like, could you 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 I guess oh, the background? Yeah, you went on. You took your son. On a Cub Scout trip, right? Yeah, we had Cub Scouts at our, at our local police department, which we were in a small town, and we got to tour the facilities, ask questions. And my my first question was, like, if you get pulled over, do I have to disclose that I have a weapon on me, mm-hmm. like a gun, knife, whatnot? And they said, you do not have to disclose on it. Most criminals don't tell people if they got a weapon <laughs> or not. It's like the people that usually do tell us, we appreciate it. They're not criminals. Um, but if you don't disclose it and let's say you go to your glove box and that's where you keep your handgun or weapon at, they're going to not take it so lightly if you didn't tell them. <laughs> so if you tell them up hand, they're most likely going to be calm and cool with you. And if they're, Hey, my registration's in here, my gun's in here. Um, what do you want me to do? Just listen to the cop and follow directions. It's simple. Right. I know a lot of people don't like following directions these days cause they think they're entitled, <laughs> but Listen to them, cooperate with them. Like you're being, hey, you don't have to, but it's courteous. Hey, I do have a weapon. It's here. Letting them know where it's at so they're not all worried. Because I guarantee if you don't tell them and you open that glove box, there might be a problem. They see a gun (laughs) just pop out. (laughs) Right. So just, they said you don't have to, but it's nice when you do tell them. So if they're not, oh, surprise, I got a weapon. (laughs) No, you have planned, so. But did did you also ask him if they would go door to door if there was a mandatory he, gun he confiscation? He said that they don't have the manpower really to do that. Like, and that's just your small city. That's just my small little town. Right. He's like, and even like, even like for some of the traffic stop, he was telling me like, there's we're so small town that they got to get like maybe neighboring cities to help or the local sheriff's department for the county to come in and help. And yeah, so I. He made it seem like if something like major like that going door to door, they're gonna they're gonna have to have a lot more help. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have to have yeah. every local city. And then I I brought this up. I mean, at at some point would because there's so many people that own guns. All the local law enforcement can't do that plus everything else they have to do. Yeah, like where they can't even store it. Like right, some of these small places are like a little closet. Like where are you gonna store thousands of guns? And well, then, yeah, not then having then the gotta, manpower. That not having the manpower, you got to serialize. You got to say who had it with their information because, God forbid, something else happens. The ATF doesn't keep records. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just saying. But like, if they're just going door to door and grabbing stuff, right? They don't have the manpower to do it. And so, at that point, would they call on the? They'd have to call the ATF Army. if you want to do this. Figure it out. <laughs> well, would they? Would they? Whether it be the ATF or whoever, call on the reserves. To step up and do this. At that point, I think you're going into martial law, and there's going to be a war, a civil war that breaks out. Because you got to, you got to think there are yes, there's cops that that would comply, yeah. but you have a lot, and especially in the sheriff's offices, 
that are against it and have, in other states like Florida have said, hey, we will not enforce yeah. any I mean, of this. Literally, you got to think. Like we're we have a we're a stand your ground castle ground rule here in Kansas. You think you're gonna go up to someone's door and try to take their weapons that they spent their hard working money for? Good luck with that. Well, if a lot Joe of people Biden says they're illegal, you can't have them. What well, are you gonna do? Joe Biden, come take it myself if you can make it up my stairs. <laughs> right, he's gonna fall going <laughs> up, and it'll probably fall going down. Yeah, and he probably couldn't grab it from my hand. Did you ask him anything else? Oh, uh, we asked him. Like, what equipment they have. and they As far should, as? Well, that, and like, do they have to purchase other equipment, like their firearms? Mm-hmm. And like, and he's like, no, it's it's given to us, but, like, let's say they want to do an update. Like, they go from a Gen 4, Gen 5 Glock. They have the option to go to that FFL where they got all the guns and buy back their issue, standard issue weapon back from that FFL after they do the background check and everything. Nice. And then he showed us, like, I didn't know this. They got like some laser now that can tell what type of drugs or alcohol is in. And I was like, what? It's kind of weird. Well, that's probably because there's so many, you see so many cops getting overdosed with, with fentanyl. fentanyl. Yeah. But it's like a laser. It, can, it sends the beam through and it can tell you what type of drug it is. That's crazy to me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and identify things. I was like, what? So, but. Nice. Yeah, that and like we asked him about handcuffs and education and things like that. The guy that we had, he actually was an Eagle Scout all the way through, so it was cool. Nice. So, did your son like it? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of kids, man, they just had a lot of random questions. <laughs> it's funny listening to Have little you ever kids. arrested my daddy? <laughs> <laughs> like, like when we first walked in, like we went into the lobby and there that you know they had the gun locks for free. And like, mm-hmm. my dad's got a pistol, <laughs> is what one of the kids said, and I was like, I was like. Oh, and don't say anything, don't say anything. <laughs> and then once we started walking in, I turned over to the kids. I'm like, if I ever see one of you in here, it'll be the last time. <laughs> <laughs> right. It better be the only time you ever are in a police jail or a police place. With, mm-hmm. But yeah. Nice. It was interesting just seeing how a small department, because where I work, we're lar- it's a large outfit. So they have like holding cells, drunk tanks and all right. that. And they don't even have a holding cell. <laughs> My little small town, so it's interesting. And we're also a split county, too, so depending where the crime happens depends on where they take them. Gotcha. Which is, I was like, man, that would suck. I would like to get some answers from uh, the sheriff just just to see. I bet we could call and uh, talk to him and ask questions. I guarantee that would be up for it. We should, that should be a like a, a, Chris, proje- a Chris project. <laughs> Call up our sheriff. Yeah, uh, local sheriffs. <laughs> if you can get through. Yeah. I know at work, I work with a couple of police. One of them's a chief of police. I might talk to him a little bit too and get questions. I'm sure he can answer them. Yeah. So just to kind of gauge on what local law enforcement thinks about all this stuff and what they would yeah, do. Yeah. I, th- I think a lot of them are against it. I, they are. I mean, I, I've had a lot of cops buy guns through yeah through me or have them transferred and stuff so there's a lot of them are pro 2a i mean there's some that aren't yeah. there's some that there are some that think a citizen shouldn't have a lot of this stuff or bulk ammo because i mean at that point you have an arsenal why do, why do you need to have an arsenal you never know when shit's gonna hit the fan and someone paratroops <laughs> in the sky and coming down to try to overtake us exactly hmm, interesting <laughs> sounds yep. familiar Hmm. And we're not talking about Red Dawn. No. <laughs> Pretty sure it happened in another country not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yep. You know what else drives me nuts? What's happening on Capitol Hill right now? What's that? Palestinians raiding the Capitol. Are they? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been following I've seen yet. a couple of stories like that, and I was like, hmm. But they're not a danger. They're not arresting them. What if they were to storm the Capitol? They have been. They've been storming the Capitol. They're Are they jumping ju- over that fence? They're jumping over the White House fence trying to get to the president. But and that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's peaceful, apparently. Oh, of course. Hmm. Interesting. We'll see what happens. Double but... standards. I don't know. I keep seeing things on TikTok, and it makes me wonder and think. You got to be really careful about this stuff on TikTok, though. Well, a lot of it makes sense, though. Like, why are we the only country that gets taxed half of our stuff to give to another country? What other countries are doing that right now? Yeah. 
taxes keep going up and it's like cool. I don't see other countries giving us dump money. it into the infrastructure and stuff like it's supposed to um don't give it to other countries I don't mind it going to our defense if that money stays here to defend our country yeah. don't send it over to Ukraine and freaking Israel yeah. that, that's their problem I get that we back Israel I get that but why, at but some why are point we the only ones? we're so far in debt which it yeah. just keeps getting worse and worse but that, know, it just doesn't make sense. That and the whole this whole gun control thing drives me nuts knowing what we did over there and how we just gave billions of dollars of our weapons away. I was like, how can you talk gun control when you can't even do it yourself? Because that's not here at home. That's yeah. it's out of sight, out of mind now. But that's my tax paying money that paid for that. Right. That's the thing that gets me. Like not they, to mention they're not being stewards with our tax money like they should be. Not to mention all the military lives that were yeah. lost. Yeah. And they just yeah. gave all that stuff away. Mm-hmm. Drives me nuts. <laughs> Gotta love the government. Yeah, another thing I saw was like, you know, I never see the government at six o'clock when I'm going to work. The only time <laughs> I ever see the government they don't start until nine. The only time I ever see the government is every other Friday and it's on my paycheck <laughs> when half of my earnings are gone. Right. And at the end of the year, when I got to pay them again, after they've already taken half of my money. And then also when our property taxes go up like crazy. Yeah. And it just, oh, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm so sick of it. Yes. Like I saw some guy like, what they need to do is redo it. And they got to make, what, what we pay Congress and Senate and all that is the median of the national average. Yeah, there there's no way they should be making what they make. Yeah. It's, you should not be getting richer as you're in there. And Simple as that. Ob- they say, you know, oh, we don't have insider information. Bullshit. You know, if you if you work for the government of Congress, if you're an elected official, you should not be able to, at that point, use your power, invest in stocks. Yep. You can have a 401k, RA, whatever, but uh, that's it. Because yep. otherwise, you have, they say they don't have insider information, but guess what? Hmm. They pull Pelosi. out at the right time. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi. Look Imagine at her. That. Look at all the money she's made. You should not have to fly, be able to fly on a private jet, fly commercial like the rest of us. Yep. Because you again, think, we elected you. You're working for us. Yeah, and that's the thing that drives me nuts. Like, they're, oh no, I don't. Like, listening hmm. to Mike Pence talk, and they're talking about. He's like, "What would you do for the American people?" That's not my job. Uh, yeah, it is. If you want to run for president, you're working for me. You're for the American people. You're not for these other countries. Well, remember there was uh, when Biden was running for president, um, he was at uh, some sort of oh, I remember seeing that. union workers' job or yep. some some factory, and one guy said said something, and he says, "I don't work for you." Yeah, really. So who do you work for then? <laughs> I'm pretty sure whether I vote for you or not. You're working for me. Exactly. You're supposed to look out for the American people, not other countries, not other people's yeah. agendas. In You're fact, here for the, our countries. It's like it's like Biden. I think a lot of people yeah, are. Yeah, the guy disagrees with you. You probably disagree with him, but he is right. You work for him, yeah. whether he votes for you or not. Yep. You work for the that's, whole country. And that's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of people don't think about that. Like, they're supposed to work for us. That's the. This is why that we have a government. They work for us. We elect them to work and help us, and they don't. They're helping us middle class not be able to survive. That's for sure. <laughs> They're not helping anybody but the rich. Honestly, I mean, look, rich get rich, poor hey, get poor. I know I had more money in my <clears throat> pocket and was able to afford a lot more stuff when Trump was in office. Yeah, sure. Gas prices weren't damn near four or five bucks at one point. Which is why I got a motorcycle. It's $13 to fill up now. (laughs) (laughs) Got to make your money where you can and make it last. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I'm just tired of them saying, oh, we don't work for you. Yes, you do. And if you don't, you need to get out. And don't pass all this stupid. Yeah. These stupid laws that they're trying to pass. I feel like we're going back in time. Like Roman dictator communism. This is what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. And we're pretty close to it. Man, actually, uh, I've been wanting one for the channel just to check out, but I had a customer transfer one of those Smith & Wesson FPC pistols, the yeah. folding uh, caliber, and it looks just like this. Uh, it's basically an MMP 2.0 with 
a folding frame. Yeah, it's it, it takes the same magazines and everything. It's not I, I don't know. I I wouldn't say it's not practical, but it's one of those things that looks fun. And uh <laughs> I want to get one and try it. It's obviously nine millimeter. I think they I'm yeah. assuming they do different uh calibers. calibers. I don't know. But it'd be cool to put like a little red dot on there and it's something easy to fold up. Quick easy. Put in your bag. And it's at that it's technically a rifle. And uh even though because once it's folded, I mean you can't yeah. use it to shoot. But it's pretty cool because it's it's like a pistol caliber carbine, but easier to break down and put in a backpack so it doesn't look like you're is you have a big like, gun case. Is it almost like a micaroni almost? But more practical but more than practical. a micaroni. Okay. It's uh it's got a I don't know it. If you were to marry that and that together, <laughs> it's kind of what it looks like. Okay. And then have them fold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's it's one of those. It's kind of cool. I don't know if it would. I don't know. It'd just be fun. To, it's yeah. cool. It's just something different. With. Yeah. Yeah. Because at least Smith & Wesson is coming up with stuff that's different, unlike Glock. Yeah, true. Oh, hey, we'll just combine these two and call it a new model. Yeah. We're not going to do anything innovative. Yeah. I don't know. I'm waiting because for, for something crazy to come out. You know, yeah, I'm interested to see SHOT Show 2024. I got a thing in the mail saying if I want to go, and I looked up the cost. <laughs> so if, if you, because I'm a non-member, so you have to pay $150 to become a freaking member, and then you buy the ticket, which is good for the four or five days that it goes on, for just the general access to everything minus... An open bar, it's 50 bucks. But if you want to access everything and have an open bar, it's 179 ish. It's really not bad. So I'm like, we could probably obviously drink I like, 170. Obviously, we like this drink. So. I'm pretty sure we could drink $179 worth right. of whiskey there. Because I, I don't know how much booze. I've never been to Vegas. So yeah. I don't know how expensive it is to drink in those places. Open bar, does that mean we can choose what we want? Like if they got blends, hey, just keep bringing them. I, I doubt they have that, but <laughs> it's probably beer and, you know, probably like Jack Daniels stuff like that, but oh, well. it, I, it doesn't say, but yeah, I'm 50, 50 on it. Something I would want to go to or not. It would be cool just because we've never been and, yeah. and you get to look at the new guns and stuff coming out. But I'm like, man, do I really want to spend that much on it? I think it'd be cool to go. And then you can just like, Hey, check out our podcast, every booth and then see about, Maybe yeah, building more. Yeah. So in order to go to Shot Show, you have to be in the industry somehow. Since we, since I have a business, I can do it. I can bring my wife. I can bring employees, but I got to figure out a way to make you an employee, <laughs> and because you have to show proof that you're an employee. So I don't know. I got to figure out how, how to do that. Hmm. Come up with a pay stub. Be like, yeah, I paid you. I paid you. I paid you in a bottle of whiskey to come on the yeah. podcast. Yeah, that'd be easy. So that's the only thing I got to figure out is. It's, I know how myself or my wife can go, just anybody else. Yeah. I got to figure out how, like, say you or Jacob would yeah. be able to go. And uh, that'd yeah. be fun. It's in January. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a fun little vacation right after Christmas. Yeah. Go yeah. look at guns and cool things and get to touch and feel things. <laughs> <Get> to- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. During the day and at night. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm toying around with it. We'll see. Uh, I got to look in the flights and all yeah. that. Well, now we have the we have that nonstop flight. I think out of Kansas City to Vegas. Oh yeah, Southwest flights nonstop. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously the hotel costs. I got to see what that would be. Yeah. It it just sucks. It's right at the peak of like when everybody's getting sick. Yeah. Because it's like anytime I fly on a plane, yeah, I sick. end up getting sick. Yeah. And it's like, man, I don't want to be sick out in Vegas. That would suck. Yeah. I got to fly to Phoenix for work in December. I'm already nervous about that. <laughs> like, might as well just wear a mask. I have done that before. It's just because that recycle there. Yep. You don't I, know what everyone's got on the plane. It's, it's winter and yeah, yeah. blue season. Mm-hmm. Like, I have no problem being in a big crowd of people, like for that shot show and stuff like that. But when you're on a plane, they use that recycle there. And yep. I always end up getting sick. Yeah. It sucks. Unless I wear a mask, then it kind of helps, but yeah. it's a pain in the ass. Mask and drink a lot of booze. I don't think Vegas is a very far flight either. 
No, I bet it's like an hour max, two it's, hours. I think it's a two-hour flight to Phoenix where I'm going. Yeah, so. I bet it's probably about an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, we'll see. How long of a drive is it? It's a it's a drive. Yeah. Yeah. Eight hours more? No, it's gotta it's, be more. it takes eight hours just to get across the state of Kansas. Yeah. You're looking at... Oh. <laughs> You're looking at a two day drive, nah, minimum. Nah, I've driven because uh, because I've driven here to Virginia where I was stationed at. That's a completely different way. That's sixteen. You got you to think you got to go through the mountains and stuff. Probably I had to do that. But it's Virginia. also winter, so you never know what what you're going to. Colorado hit. would be the tricky you'd, one. You probably have to go down through Oklahoma to Texas and then back up. You could take the northern route, a southern route. Middle route, but again, it you never know when it's going to snow in Texas. Yeah. Um, Kansas is especially west, they, they'll shut down I 70, yeah, and then you're screwed. Colorado, once you get into Colorado, I mean, you never know what you're gonna you got to go through the mountains. And if you go up through Nebraska again, yeah, same thing, know. I don't know. Well, it's just it's just so much easier, it'd be easier to fly, probably, yeah. I mean, I'm I, I like driving just because I like to stop and see stuff, and then if we by whiskey, it's yeah. whiskey hunt a little bit. Yeah, so I wish it was in maybe the springtime and not like dead of winter. Yeah, then hell yeah, let's drive, take I, a road trip. Yeah, I know the SEMA show just ended last week. I, w- I would love to go to that eventually, but I don't know. Yeah, sell the cars and oh, <laughs> it's so much fun. Well, let us know if any of you guys have l- listening have been the shot show. If you think it's worth it or not. Yeah, I, I would interested in going yeah i heard it it's something that takes several days to get through yeah just because there's so much yeah i bet it's overwhelming but that'd be cool content to bring like go interview somebody at a booth on this new thing that they're coming out with yeah, like arrow go talk to arrow precision yeah things like that and i think there's stuff where you can actually go out and shoot and stuff because be cool. we could also qualify as media yeah because we got the youtube channel so i don't know something to look into yeah we're a media gun Right. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, be interesting. Yeah. I just know for an open bar, it was a hundred. It just sucks because then I have to spend a hundred and fifty dollars just to become a member. Yeah. Like, ah. Oh. And then you got even. Yeah. I got to figure out. I would assume the open bar is worth it. That's what I would think so. Because, I, I mean, mean, it's what, three, four days? If you go of to a drinking? bar with your buddies, you're going to spend. 50 yeah. bucks easy All day and this long. is over several days in vegas yeah, so you're looking let's say 150 bucks in three days on mm-hmm. liquor by itself usually so that's it's probably yeah right. how much did we blow in tennessee <laughs> yeah, i mean walking around <laughs> with a beer looking at all the cool oh, stuff yeah. yeah have a whiskey on the rocks exactly jack daniels <laughs> do a virtual podcast from vegas that yeah. would be awesome yeah that would be just Live, sucks. that's when you? driving would help to yeah it would bring everything but i mean these phones they can record a lot. Yeah, and you have that little uh, mixer. Yeah, and then just bring a couple microphones and, or we could do this boom yeah. microphone. But then the, you got a lot of back. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, do something. We'd have to bring this stuff anyway because I'd want to do videos. So yeah, use either the main camera, these phones, or some GoPros. I don't know. Yeah, figure it out. I mean, now with my phone, it's USB C, so I can just yep onto a stick. I've been messing with that a little bit. Yep. It's awesome. Nice. New phone. You know what sucks? And I needed to do a podcast on this on Shotgun Studio. Apple just came out not too long ago with the M2. Groundbreaking, super fast. Now they're on the M3. And they came out with the freaking M3 already. Yep. Like, I don't think M2's been out a year yet. No, it hasn't. I think they and launched that back in April, if I remember. It's like, if I bought an M2... I'd be really pissed off right now because now they got the M3. I was actually listening to someone talk about this yesterday. Like, their computer was starting to crap. And he's like, I bought it four years ago. It was Apple, brand new. He's like, just give me everything since I use it for video mm-hmm. editing and everything. He's like, this is all I use it for is this this, this green space is Apple for my content here. And then at home, I got my gaming right. and all that. And it's a totally different setup. But he's like, I asked him to give me a new MacBook Pro, fully loaded top of the line he's like it was eight grand oh, how shit. can you afford eight grand for a laptop <laughs> i was like that's uh, nuts yeah but it had like eight terabytes of storage 
Ah, just get an SSD card. Yeah, that's why. He's like, I wouldn't probably do that. He's like, I got a terabyte on this. That's all I need. Yeah. When I was, when I started the business, it was before I decided to re-up, kind of get back into the YouTube stuff. I bought a MacBook Air. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, it's long battery life. So when I'm at the gun shows, perfect. You know, use it for whenever. Usually a Mac will last a long time. You don't have to worry about that. Well, Ever since we got back into the YouTube stuff and doing these, <laughs> the MacBook Air Doesn't is quite. not a good laptop for live streaming. Because if you've ever seen our live streams, there's a, yeah. a noticeable delay and there's kind of one going on now. And then also doing video editing, it's a delay and it crashes. And yeah, it's like, I want to upgrade, but it's so expensive. I highly recommend looking at the refurb. Because you can get a newer laptop that's been refurbished through Apple. Yeah, but how long? That's that laptop I mean, that's, is going to be out there by the time you get that refurbed M2. Well, M5 it, is going to be out. No, because they've already got M2s on there. Because I've looked because because with the computer program at work, and they've got new 16 inch M2s already on there with a Pro Max chip, and it's like, mm, and it's cheaper. Yeah. But then it, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I'd rather have the newest thing. But then by the time I get that, a couple of years later, they're going to be an M6. I don't know. I don't and it's know. like, do I get, obviously, the next one would be a, a MacBook Pro. Yeah. Or since we have it mounted to the desk anyway, stu- uh, Mac Studio or a mini studio. Yeah. With more ports. I don't need a display because I got one right here. Or do I get the, what is it, the, iMac, yeah, the iMac with the Versa mount and just have that right here and yeah. run everything through that. I don't know. Either way, it's very expensive. They are, but I love them. The iMac and, it, and, and same thing with cameras. Sony keeps coming out <laughs> with all these new models. It is so hard. Like the Sony ZV-E10 was like really cool, which we're on now. What was that? 2020 when COVID happened. I 19, bought the last yeah. one before they went out of stock for a yeah. long time. Now it seems like Sony keeps coming out with all these cameras and it's like, well, the one that you had is cool, but like there's, well, they're trying to push that technology on you. I don't know. Like in microphones road, <laughs> uh, you know, road's been coming out with a new stuff and I've been watching it. Obviously they came out with the roadcaster pro two, but then they came out with the duo to where it's smaller and less expensive. It only has two inputs. Yeah. And then they came out with like something kind of like the stream deck that we use. And then they've come out with, a different so many different microphones like they just came out with a new road nt1 and they even though they just released the road nt1 fifth gen now they have another signature series comes in different colors though yeah that's where they get you like oh this is a new series but it's in different colors it's better than the last one the last one you just came out with came out like <laughs> less than six months ago and i are introducing this one, which yeah. is cheaper i don't know there's just it's with tech it's it's awesome but it also sucks because it's like, well, shit, is my stuff outdated? When it, it 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 works, you don't necessarily have to. But then you're sitting there as a consumer, like, shit, what am I doing? Yeah, like I got the, I bought this, think it was latest and greatest, and now we're on the yeah. second my, version above this. That was my biggest worry with the iPhone. That's why I waited. <laughs> well, in six months, they're gonna come out with the six. What is that? That's a 15 Pro. They're gonna Max. come out with the 16, and then your yeah. phone's gonna be outdated. And I don't know. I think. There's a big jump between my 12 Pro Max to the 15 Pro Max. What do I have? You got a 14 Pro okay. Max. <laughs> Honestly, I think from the 12, they, they've... I mean, there's differences, but not... Yeah, it's like I'm having a hard time getting used to the dynamic island. Oh, yeah. That's I, no problem. Yeah, I'm because I've not been used to it. So... But the cameras on it and the editing stuff on there is, oh, my God. Yeah. But before you know it, that's when they're going to come out with 16, 17. Yeah. 18 will probably be next year. Who knows? I doubt it. But that's it's been something I've been noticing because obviously we do a lot of stuff with technology yeah. for the podcast and stuff. It's like, man, right when you think you buy the latest and greatest, Something's six months mm-hmm. now. And it's kind of the same thing with guns is you've seen, you know, this – Springfield Hellcat came out. Well, now it's on the, you know, there's a Hellcat Pro and all these other versions. And there's so, like, with Shot Show years and years ago, a gun would, co- a new gun would come out every now and then. Yeah. Now it seems like 
every year There's more and more new. and more and more stuff keep coming out and it's so like they used to be able to keep track of every glock gen like it's pretty easy but yeah. like to keep track of what it was now it's like yeah. i don't know what the hell is a glock 47 i don't know it's a combination of yeah. these two i don't <laughs> like yeah, there was a Glock 19, 17, 26 were your main ones. Yep. That's it. You have the subcompact, the compact, and the full frame. Yep. That was easy to keep track of. Now you got the long slide, short frame, <laughs> vice versa, single stack, yeah. but yeah. Uh, Gen 3 grooves, Gen 4, Gen 5. There's, it's almost getting to the point to where there's so much shit. Yeah. As a consumer, it, it's so hard to decide on stuff. It, it, it is. I think they do that on purpose. Yeah. Like, like, especially if you're someone that loves tech, you're going to try to get have the latest and greatest of everything. Uh-huh. And it, you just can't do it. No. Not they, unless you're The latest and greatest loaded. is so expensive. And then a year or two goes by, and, well, now yeah. that's worthless because this other thing just came out. And, yeah. you know, if you're looking for the perfect concealed carry gun, good luck. Yeah, yeah. You know, it used to be, well, you're limited to these. Here's some good options. Now it's fucking Pick your whatever. Poison. Yeah. Oh, and then something else is going to come out next year. So, yeah. and then you're going to be like, well, crap, maybe I should have gotten that one. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, it's never so, ending cycle. And that's, yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yes, it is. <laughs> but yeah, so that's enough of us ranting about technology, technology, <laughs> which it, it applies to the guns too. Yeah. I mean, same thing. But, well, everything's making it easier. So, it, it's almost like companies are under pressure to come up with something new every I, year. Yeah. Well, the, well, you remember you used to want to take a loss. Now they want to see you take gains. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on the market. So they're like, oh, we got this brand new gun. Push the market so they can up their sales again instead of being stagnant. Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what that text comes through on the Ammo Act. <laughs> see what that actually. If it, I I want to see if it addresses like you said the um reload reloader yeah i doubt find it out to, to be determined hopefully but, it just gets shot down yeah because obviously the second bill that we talked about has already been shot down once and they're reintroducing it yeah. to get shot down again hopefully so yep. but it's just they keep coming after it coming after it and at some point it's like at some point something's probably going to pass yeah and you just got to be careful because they try and take and take a little bit of time and then give yeah. an inch and they take a freaking... Yeah, take a whole mile. Yeah. Gotta love it. Yep. So that's uh, that's all we got this week. Uh, yeah, if there's anything you want us to talk about specific in the upcoming episode, let us know in the description below. Let us know, like I said, if you've been pulled by uh, any of these polling companies where they're coming out with this bs yeah surveys and surveys and stuff like that so and if you like the tactical walls behind us check out tacticalwalls.com use code bst10 for 10 percent off to show off your guns and your second amendment whether it be in your office like this a studio garage bedroom you have a bunch of different concealment stuff concealment furniture you want to hide it and have it strategically placed in case anything were to happen hidden away out of plain sight check them out no but also if you guys want if you liked the motorcycle content that was on this channel uh go check out the new channel i started just specifically for that rusted kc moto um i'm going to be doing all newer videos over there on the lowrider st and all that fun stuff if you like that content check out rusted kc moto and with that Remember, this is a YouTube podcast. Remember to like, subscribe, and tickle that bell. If you're listening on any other platform, remember to hit that follow button. With that, everyone, have a good one.